Hi everyone, thank you so much for, for joining us today. We're just gonna leave it um, a, a minute um, just to let everyone join us. Got a really good number booked on today. Um, so um, we'll just uh, begin in, in just under a minute. Um, but just, just to confirm, you've come to the right place. And um, this is the uh, webinar from NGA, Nina and myself are, are delivering. Um, today on Ofsted, a very exciting topic, um, but but one that we know is is um, uh, something that, that that so many of of you, so many of our members, so many um, uh, governors and trustees across the country um, are really interested in. Um, uh, many of you would have um, experienced inspection yourself. Um, some of you haven't, and. Um, uh, want to want to hear more um, so um, hopefully um, uh, we'll, we'll be covering that in sufficient detail for you today um, so just to um, introduce myself I'm Sam Henson I'm the director of policy and communications here at uh, the National Governance Association and I'm joined by Nina Nina do you want to say a quick hello before? hi everyone good afternoon Thanks, Nina. So Nina, Nina is uh, our Senior Policy and Research Officer here at NGA. So like I said, we're going to be uh, here talking to you about Ofsted um, today. Um, Nina and I um, join you um, uh, as, as members of, of, of the NGA team, um, but we also govern. So Nina's a, a, a governor herself. I'm a trustee of Multi Academy Trust. So um, we're, we're very much here with both hats on uh, today. So um, Nina, if you could move the slide on please. Um, absolutely. I just saw a, a question um, coming up about the, the slides. We will be sending the slides out to you afterwards. So don't feel pressure to write lots of notes. Um, uh, the, the, the slides will be coming out. This session is also going to be recorded. It will be on the website um, uh, very quickly as well. Um, so, um, you, you know, if there, there's anything you didn't quite pick up um, as, as you're listening today, you can always go back and, and listen to any part again. Um, we, we won't have time to address any specific questions that come up through the chat um, today. We've got a, a fairly packed um, session, um, but um, Nina's included a slide at the end with, with both, both of our email addresses. Um, so please do feel free to contact either of us afterwards if any questions, we'd be really happy to, to take those um, on um, afterwards. So this is just a, a rundown of what we're gonna be covering for you in this session. Um, we're going to be talking uh, about the, the latest um, uh, on, on the education inspection framework. Um, we're going to be looking at it really from the perspective of, of governance, um, looking at that interaction between inspection and governance, how inspectors engage uh, and, and talk to um, governors and trustees, what are the things you need to know about Ofsted and the inspection of your school, um, uh, or, or your schools, if you're a trustee of, of a, of a multi-academy trust, looking at the, 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 the experiences um, of those of you who have recently gone through inspection yourself. Um, so today's uh, webinar really um, draws on that, that information. We really want to share with you um, some very real life examples of things um, uh, and just um, give you that, um, that snapshot, which I think, um, uh, uh, really reflects where we're at today um, with the education inspection framework. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Nina, who's going to um, talk to you um, a, a little bit about um, where, we're, where we're up to today uh, with Ofsted. Thank you, Sam. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us. I thought I'd take um, a few minutes to talk through some of the uh, updates that we can expect from Ofsted from September. Um, there's some quite timely ones, but um, it's important to kind of first and foremost talk about the white the results of the white paper. So um, as set out in the white paper, uh, supporting schools not making necessary improvements was one of the main things that they wanted to implement, which was essentially um, providing powers to schools with two or more consecutive judgments below good um, to be uh, subject to an academy order essentially. That power has now been passed through parliament so it will go into effect from September. So if you um, or your school or, or schools around you um, do have that judgment of below good um, 
two or more times, then you can expect to receive an academy order. Uh, the government has set out that the 55 education investment areas are the priority areas for this, first and foremost. Um, all schools will be inspected by 2025. Uh, so if you've not yet had an inspection under the education inspection framework, you can expect one soon. Um, and this also includes those schools that um, have been previously graded outstanding and were at one time exempt. So you can expect an inspection soon. Uh, we saw a couple of months, uh, a year or so ago, actually, uh, Ofsted do a review on sexual behaviour, bullying and harassment. And the, the results of that review showed some really starking findings about what it's like to be in some of these schools and um, safeguarding concerns that surround um, sexual behaviour and um, harassment. Uh, so you can expect that um, as inspections continue there will be a focus on safeguarding concerns how they're handled and how they're managed and some of those practices include inspectors talking to people themselves and that will really um you know um hone in on how people feel at school whether they feel safe and how where are these areas being addressed and how school leaders are listening to their pupils about this issue more recently, um, Ofsted have uh, done an update on the school inspection handbooks on Monday. They published a review. So uh, this is a regular review that they tend to do, uh, which can sometimes be terminology changes and kind of neaten up things that have happened throughout the year. One of those changes is the changes to the name of inspections. So what uh, you and I may know is Section 5 and Section 8 inspections are now called graded inspections if they're Section 5 and ungraded inspections if they're Section 8. So in the handbook, when you go to look at the September 2022 handbooks, uh, you'll see that they're now referenced as graded and ungraded. This is purely just for clarity for parents and other stakeholders, um, just so that they know OK, Section 5 is the graded one and a Section 8 is ungraded. It's, it's uh, something just to make sure that everyone is understanding of what the inspection process and what to inspect. Um, COVID-19 measures um, in the handbook previously kind of acknowledged that schools were going through an emergency situation essentially um, but they haven't completely diminished the fact that COVID is still a huge factor within schools so any COVID-19 impact measures that are have been put into the sort of temporary um, uh, measures that were inspected they're now into the handbooks and then probably the main one that we can expect from September 2022 are the curriculum transition periods. So when the education inspection framework came into effect in 2019, um, Ofsted recognised that some school leaders wanted to amend their practice or their curriculum to suit the way that Ofsted um, were inspecting curriculum. So they had a period um, from 2019 to 2020, which has now been extended to 2022, and this still is the case. So from 2000, uh, September 2022, uh, there is a new grade descriptor which acknowledges that uh, school leaders are, and uh, curriculum leaders are still going to be making changes or reviewing elements of the curriculum. So it's, there's not an expectation to have everything set in stone for September. Um, the grade descriptor under the quality of education will make that acknowledgement in itself. In the speech bubble, this is um, the, the change that they've made uh, within the handbook. I'll let you read that for yourself. But um, a good example of it is, is how they take the curriculum is taking into account the impact of COVID-19. Inspectors will be uh, particularly interested um, in looking into the effectiveness of leaders' actions and the steps that are being taken um, within those subject areas that need uh, further work. And then a few more uh, changes that um, I'll, I'll glaze over quite quickly. Uh, the inspection of colleges and sixth forms, that's been enhanced. So there's um, a new narrative subjudgment on skills needs. So if that applies to you, I recommend you have a look at that and take a look at what the enhancements are. There's also changes to the early years inspection handbook. So there's guidance on how the uh, framework applies to different contexts. So if you're an out of school setting, the, um, the, the guidance is there to, to uh, essentially provide you an overview of how the framework will suit that. 
And then another terminology change of no formal designation inspections, and they are now called urgent inspections. And that's for the same reason as the section five and section eight change, which is just purely for clarity. In true NGA fashion, uh, we will be updating our resources to reflect these changes. So when you're back from your summer break, um, and ready for the new academic year, you'll expect uh, new updated guidance um, on our Knowledge Centre and a new learning link module, which will be updated to reflect um, all of these changes. So uh, we'll be sure to let you know when they're available to view. I'll pass you on to Sam now, uh, who will talk about the uh, report and uh, the uh, findings from our research that we've recently conducted. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Nina. Um, and I, I think that's a, a really good point actually really good timing um, to be talking about Ofsted this week because there's been uh, like like Nina just said um, changes that are kind of hot off the press really um, and and so we've been able to bring that to you uh, quite quickly quite quickly even before we've updated our, our our own resources so like Nina says that will be coming very soon um, okay I want to uh, for for a, a brief period of time and um, think about what the the interaction um, between um, uh, inspectors and those governing actually looks like um, and we're going to be looking at some of the findings from our own uh, reports and, and research that um, we'll be talking to you about in a minute but just just as a bit of an overview and um, we've we've put this slide here which just just gives it a, a, a real kind of taste of the the things uh, uh, of, of how it works in practice the things that you can inspect expect as part of that interaction between yourself as a governor or trustee and, and meeting with an inspector um first thing that we should say is that inspectors will meet with those responsible for governance. There is um, nothing in the research that we've done that suggests that that doesn't happen. And uh, actually, um, I think it's something that um, it really is a key part of, of the process um, uh, overall. Um, the, the actual time that inspectors meet with those governing um, uh, as part of the, the inspection itself varies hugely. Uh, something that we've asked about um, in, in a, a study that we did earlier this year, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute, but lasting uh, as little as 10 to 15 minutes or as much as an hour and a half. Um, the majority lasted somewhere in the region of 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, uh, really kind of depends on what's going on. Um, we also found that the majority had their meeting um, with inspectors on the, the morning of day two of the inspection itself. Um, but that meeting should take place without staff present um, and uh, all governors and trustees um, in theory uh, are enti entitled to attend. Obviously, it kind of depends who's available at the time. I think as, as a board, you should plan um, for how you would um, uh, how how inspection would 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 would, um, would would go if, for example, your chair or your vice chair wasn't available. So you need to be in a position where you're not overly reliant on one or two individuals. Actually, if it came to it, um, you, you know you, you need to feel confident as a board um, in 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 anyone on the governing board being part of those conversations. They're obviously going to explore that wider contribution that governance um, makes to the life of the school or your group of schools. Um, the, uh, thinking about the, 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 the three um, uh, core functions, but in reality, evidence suggests that those conversations are are mixed um, uh, between uh, governance and and the curriculum. Um, uh, you know, all sorts of things in between can can come up. Um, uh, but 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 those those conversations um, there there is no clear pattern of exactly how they how they go in real life. Um, so I think go into that that conversation knowing that actually it is exactly that it's a conversation, and um, absolutely the inspector is going to have certain things they're going to want to ask based on what they've found and seen already. Um, but actually experience shows the research we've done shows that um uh, though 
there is real room uh, usually for, for, a, for an actual conversation. And that, that means that governors and trustees do have room to be um, a, a leading voice in that conversation uh, as well. If I can move to my next uh, slide, please, Nina. Thank you. So we published a report back in 2020 called um, a, a View from the Board, which looked at the experience of governors and trustees um, engaging with inspectors during the very first term of the new um, inspection framework. We've followed that up this year. Nina did um, uh, some work earlier on this year um, uh, doing a, a study looking at the experiences um, from, um, from, from people um, who have experienced um, inspections since September 21. Um, and we wanted to look at how the results had differed, um, if we were getting the same messages that we got in 2020. Obviously, in 2020, when we when we did this, it was still a, a, a very new framework. And in reality, it still is, because although it came about in 2019, obviously, we had a, a significant period of time where um, regular inspection was put on hold. Um, so there's still many things that we're learning about in terms of the, this current framework, I think it's fair to say. Um, school inspection of view from the board two years on takes its findings from 111 survey uh, respondents, and we build on that through a further 120 published Ofsted re reports, uh, reports that, that cover the same time frame. And it builds very much uh, on that early report that, that we did, like I said. Um, and it paints a very mixed picture, as indeed the first one did. Um, uh, in, in, in terms of how inspectors are establishing um, uh, an understanding of, of governance and how they engage with governance. Um, I think what we're finding now this year is that actually inspectors have um, established a, a firmer understanding of the strategic role of governance, which is a really positive thing. One, one of the things we said in 2020 is we were, we were worried about how some of the conversations were going down a slightly operational route because of the nature of the framework being much more about the curriculum. Um, but this year we found um, that the conversations at least are um, uh, very much weighted towards those that strategic role of, of the boards. Um, so that's 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 certainly a positive. Um, on, on a not so positive um, uh, point, we found a fairly decisive um, picture that's emerged in terms of the declining visibility of governance through the way inspections are reported. Um, so the, the study revealed really an increasing trend towards Ofsted inspection reports, more generally lacking sufficient depth. So NGA, um, when we published um, that, that study, we also, uh, that coincided with an open letter that went to uh, Amanda Spillman at Ofsted um, uh, calling um, for our view that, that we think the reports need to change. Um, I think it's fair to say they're not going to change. You know, we've made the case. I think um, uh, Ofsted are quite committed to keeping um, the, the format of those reports as they are, which in, in their, to their mind, that's because it, it very much suits the needs of parents and um, and captures the things that parents need. Um, but because, because of that and their, their limitations, it, it does make other things even more important than they used to be. So the feedback meetings, um, Nina's going to come back to in, in a moment, but they are, they are absolutely crucial for getting that information that you perhaps might have got a bit more of in the reports a few years ago, which you simply don't get then now. Um, so um, uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, this, this kind of gives you a sample of some of those key findings. Um, what, whilst the study shows there's pretty much always been an interaction with governance itself during the inspection, it, it varies hugely. Um, you know, I've talked about the reports already. Um, and um, I, I think um, in terms of what's being covered within the inspec inspections and uh, those conversations with, with those governing, um, the, the inspection um, handbook states that um, uh, th there will be a conversation around the core functions. Um, our findings show that um, it, it's fairly mixed again. 11% um, of, 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 of uh, respondents to our study said there was no questions asked at all about the core functions. So the vast majority do have a conversation about the, the core functions somewhere, um, with probably the exception of that being the third core function. So thinking about um, how money is spent, um, uh, 
that tends to be something that doesn't come up as much. Clearly, there's going to be some exceptions. For example, if, if inspectors are picking up that money's not being spent or allocated sufficiently to the curriculum, then it might come up or it might come up in terms of pupil premium. Um, but generally speaking, um, it tends to be core function one and two. So that's um, setting uh, vision and, and strategy and then thinking about um, how the, the head teacher and the organisation is, is held to account. Um, uh, they're the things um, for, held to account for the, 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 the education performance. They're the two things, uh, they're the two core functions that, that tend to be picked up um, in the majority of, of cases. Um, next slide, please, Nina. Um, so this this was just to give you a flavour of, of just a few of the comments that were being said back to us um, in terms of the experiences um, that, that people had. Um, and, and as you can see, a mixed bag, um, you know, some very much thinking that actually the process itself is, is better, more of a two way conversation. Um, uh, that, that actually inspections picked up as much on the positives as as much as they did on on the things that need changing and and, and the negatives. Um, but then a few negative points as well. Um, one of the things we found on a few occasions is um, some people didn't think the context was taken into enough in terms of the impact of the pandemic. Um, so that's uh, something that, that's reoccurred a, a, a little bit. Um, some views that the, the, the process still feels a bit like a compliance exercise, a bit like um, uh, the inspectors coming along and, and, and ticking things off. Um, but I think this comment in the middle is a really good one to highlight. And um, this is some, somebody who um, uh, has experienced offset for the first time. And actually, you know, I think this, this is quite a good reflection um, point for lots of inspections. Yeah, the challenging and, uh, questions will be asked. Um, but actually, of, often the overall view is that often those conversations are quite fair and, and reasoned. Um, you know, I say all that. Obviously, it will will vary massively depending on on where you're at uh, as a school. But just give you a taste, and we've got lots of more of those kind of free text um, um, experiences. So have a look in in that report that we've we've talked about. Um, next slide, please, Nina. Thank you. So. I wanted to come briefly on to um, uh, thinking about inspection in terms of um, the, the, the strategic role of boards and how that then feeds into the actual um, experience of being um, interviewed by inspectors and, and, and where, where governors and trustees stand on that. Today, we very much have a framework that is built around the most weighted judgment, the quality of education. And within that, we find that this focus on, on the three I's that we've got here, intent, implementation and impact. And that intent is all about that ambition behind what we teach our pupils, that ambition that we have as governing boards that's driving that vision setting. Um, implementation is um, uh, out of the three eyes is the one that you would least likely expect the conversations to go down in terms of the, the governors and, and trustees. That's about the, the curriculum being developed and taught and, and how it's working day in, day out. Um, but then we have impact, you know, what, it, what, what, what is actually being delivered in real life and how do we know that that is what is needed? So Ofsted looks at these three, making a judgment on the depth the breadth and, and the balance of the education offer, the curriculum, but that, that has meant it's not always totally clear where governance comes in. And, and this has meant sometimes that conversations with inspectors have gone in a, a certain direction that perhaps hasn't always been in the realms of that, that governance territory. So one thing to say on this is governing boards need to have the, the confidence to know what they should and shouldn't be asked about. And that's Clearly a tricky one. Some of you probably think it was very easy for you to say that. Um, but in, in practice, you know, when you're there on the ground, you hit panic mode, you just want to answer the questions. Absolutely, I completely get that. I think one of the, the hardest things I've ever done as, as a governor is that 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 very first experience of, of Ofsted. Um, but um, actually, we've heard some really um, encouraging um, uh, cases where uh, governors and, and trustees have told us that actually they were asked something that actually didn't fit with their role and they, they challenged inspectors back. They actually, um, uh, actually that came through in the report itself and the inspectors engaged with that um, conversations. So thinking about um, 
uh, actually, um, you know, inspectors are people. Um, they, they're there to have that conversations. You know, we often think about the stress, the fear that accompanies conversations around Ofsted. And I think that brings us on to a, the bigger role for governing boards, which isn't thinking about just um, the inspection process itself, but, but also thinking about what role do governing boards play in setting the, the culture and, and the expectations around uh, governance um, uh, of Ofsted, sorry. Um, the, 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 there's the, the, the bigger role that I think um, the, the governors and trustees can play in addressing that 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 that, that culture of fear that we, we sometimes we sometimes see when it comes to Ofsted, adjusting that mindset, adjusting the way um, we approach Ofsted, and and actually thinking about actually if if we if we're really confident as a board in who we are, knowing what we do. The conversations we have with our leaders that we, we know that we're talking about the right things we know that we know our schools um, and um, we've got a, a, a clear idea of, of our strengths and weaknesses then then you're already in a very confident um, position it's highly unlikely um, actually um, that uh, you know in in, in what in what uh, in one or two days um, inspectors can come along and find out a load of stuff that you as governors and trustees don't already know about. Um, obviously, that, that doesn't mean to say that has never happened, um, but where that has happened, um, you, you know, that Ofsted are right to point it out and clearly governance hasn't been what it, it's needed to be there. Um, but I, I think that for, for governing boards being confident in what, what they're doing, then they know they can go into that inspection process knowing that the chances of, 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 of being um, uh, of encountering lots of surprises when it comes to that feedback session are very slim. So, I guess what I'm saying is that as a governor or trustee, you can. You, it's important to have that confidence in those decisions that you make as a board. Um, you know, throughout the year, um, and 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 actually, you can use that confidence to support your leaders in in the run up to inspection. You, 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 your part of your role in providing that support is, is to convince leaders who are working hard to deliver uh, the strategy that, that you've agreed um, uh, that, that they don't need to fear um, the, the consequences either. Um, and, and actually, um, you can work together uh, as a team and that to, to adjust that culture for the whole school. Um, I think that's really important. Um, Emma Knight, Sanjay's um, uh, chief executive, she made this point at, the, at her annual address back in November that governing boards and not Ofsted is the key line of accountability. Um, and actually, whilst Ofsted plays a really important role um, uh, as part of that, that triangulation process um, uh, and, and clearly an important role as, as, as the inspectorate, actually, governing boards um, uh, provide that first and foremost line of accountability. So I think that's really important. Um, my next slide, please, Nina. Thank you. Um, so thinking about then, if, we, if we're gonna be able to do that, clearly we need the confidence there. Um, and uh, that means we need to be assured in what we're doing. And it also means that we know that we're gonna be able to give a good account of ourselves as governors and trustees and the board. Uh, to inspectors when they come along. So on a practical level, I think one thing that's worth raising here is you need to be prepared to have that conversation. Um, but in order to do that, um, uh, you need to know that actually governance is strong and you need to know how governance contributes to um, your school improvement um, strategy, how governance um, contributes to um, the, the improvement journey of, of your school. While inspectors, in theory, will, will do their homework on your organisation's governance, actually feedback suggests that won't always happen. In fact, I spoke to somebody just recently who'd just gone through an inspection and they said that the inspector turned up, didn't have a, have a clue um, how, how governance worked in that organisation, didn't actually look on the website, didn't, uh, uh, didn't, didn't um, hadn't looked at the minutes or, or, or anything really. So went into that conversation, um, it being very much an unknown to them. Um, you know, I wouldn't, certainly feedback from, from the work we've done suggests that that's, that's um, not a common um, example, but it, it could happen. So to be prepared to explain 
how you do governance and what how it works you know what is your your structure for those of you who are trustees in a map for example be very clear on on how the structure um, contributes um, uh, to the overall um, school improvement um, strategy. Um, if, if you're working with that committees, um, you know, whether you're maintaining school or, or a map board or, or, or whatever, then uh, actually, why is it that you're doing that? And how, how does, how, where do the conversations on, on curriculum, where do they fit in? Who talks about that, for example? So thinking very specifically about um, how you know governance is good, um, if you do um, uh, uh, a governing board self-review or even better, if you've had an external review of governance, come prepared to talk about that. Um, yeah, the, the other things that, that you use, whether that's skills audits um, or, or, or training, I think these are all um, key tools in, in giving that confidence into that conversation. Um, when we think about vision and, and strategy, um, I think using, using a guide like NGOs being strategic and that can give you a really good um, step ahead. Uh, and actually you can then say to Inspector, well, you know, as a, as a board, we have this high, lab, high level um, strategy document that we use. Uh, and, and you know, this clearly demonstrates our ambitions. This clearly de demonstrates um, where we sit in terms of um, uh, the, the, our drive for um, uh, promoting uh, uh, an excellent curriculum for, for, for our school or, 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 or our trust. Um, so using these different things to really express that level of ambition, I think is really important. So I guess really what I'm saying is don't be shy in talking about your achievements as a board. Don't be shy in talking about your monitoring role as well. Um, also, one of the things that I would say before I move on to the next slide is one of the things that often does come up we found um, in conversations between inspectors and, and governing boards is how, how you equip staff um, and specifically thinking about staff workload. So I think um, uh, being clear on your answers to that, we know that that's happening among you. Um, our survey results from our annual governance survey shows the vast majority of you have a, a very systematic approach to monitoring and addressing issues relating to staff workload. Um, so just going into that conversation, knowing that you've got that to hand, I think it is, is really important. Um, next slide, please. Curriculum intent. The um, 2022 report that we've just done, um, the, the follow one, follow up one, um, revealed that 71% uh, of, of people who'd gone through the inspection process reported that they were, they were asked questions about the curriculum. Now, kind of surprising because, um, you know, I, I think actually we, we've been, we, we would have thought that it would be closer to 100%, um, but, but actually it's still the, the majority. The questions that were asked about curriculum varied in, in approach. Some related very specifically to subject areas or specific pupil groups. Others related much more to the the, the core function one, which is set in um, your, your vision and, and strategy and thinking about where the curriculum sat in terms of your ambitions for your pupils. But this conversation, I think, uh, of curriculum really shouldn't be separated from your role as visionaries for your organisation. It very much comes back to that first core function and um, uh, uh, really dwelling on, on, on where where you're heading as an organization, where do you want to be in, in three to five years time? Practically, um, I think the, the conversation itself comes across often in a fairly straightforward uh, conversation where the inspector says, you know, tell us about your strengths and weaknesses. That's probably one of the questions that comes up the most. And the, the, me giving you these ideas, these questions, by the way, isn't me saying it, these things will definitely be be asked. I think one thing we have to be really careful is, is pretending that there's a secret formula to making your way through an Ofsted inspection. Ignore anyone that says that exists because actually the, the point of this framework is it's, it's a conversational led um, uh, uh, framework that will change um, uh, uh, depending on what's, what's happened in, uh, in that, that very moment up to those conversations with governors and trustees. Um, you know, there is no secret set of questions that are asked on, on every single, every single um, inspection. So just be aware of that. Um, 
while that, that grace period on curriculum that Nina talked about earlier is, is coming to an end, that doesn't mean that your school's process of evolving your curriculum comes to an end. Um, making sure that you have an accurate evaluative understanding of your current curriculum practice in your school, I think is really important. If you've identified uh, appropriate next steps, um, which uh, include taking into account any impact of COVID-19, then obviously be, be upfront about that. Those of us who, who govern, we champion the right uh, of children in our, in our organisations to, to a high quality and wide ranging education. Um, and so as true champions of that, we can help inspectors understand these are the choices that we've made in, in regards to, to us championing that drive. The good news is most of you are doing that. Um, our survey um, tells us that most of you are confident that you have a diverse curriculum in place um, and um, uh, that's, that's, that's really positive. And so if you're confident about that, I think letting that shine through these steps here that we've got on this slide, it's not an exhaustive list of, of, of the considerations you need to make to help you get there, but it, it just gives you a good idea. I think if, you know, if, if for example, this one about involving stakeholders, um, uh, you know, I think, uh, do, do we know how engaged um, parents are um, with what we're teaching um, their children? Do they think it's setting them up for failure or successes? If we, can, if we can be assured in answers like that all year round, um, then I think that puts us in a really good place. Like I said, there's no formulaic approach, um, but, but uh, the, the, these steps are helpful. Um, when we've asked about curriculum design um, before and what, what are the drivers and motivations behind curriculum um, of, 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 of schools, one of the things that, the thing that comes back the vast majority of the time is that the, the number one driver is the organization's vision and strategy. And that pips the post, um, you know, that, that beats um, doing it because of changes to Ofsted's uh, inspection framework. So that's, that's a real positive. Um, my next slide, please, Nina. Okay, um, this is my final slide before I hand back over to, to Nina. Just a quick word on, on deep dives, something that, uh, terminology that you would have become more familiar with. Um, uh, both reports that we've done uh, in 2020 and 22 um, uh, found that, that governing boards are adopting an increased role in the curriculum, as we've talked about, and that's largely been driven um, by the framework, and but sometimes it's been driven uh, specifically by um, concerns around what this deep dive focus will look like. Um, but governing boards shouldn't get too caught up in the idea of, of deep dives. They need to come back to that strategic operational divide here. I think that's really important. Deep dives are simply part of the methodology for understanding the whole curriculum in the form of, of, of an in-depth um, examination of a subject um, for, for inspectors to really establish a, a coherent base on the quality of education. But that will very much be done as inspectors meet curriculum and subject leads and observe uh, learning um, through their conversations with them, absolutely that might then um, uh, mean that the conversations with governors and trustees might, might take a slight turn in, in a specific direction, um, but, but ultimately it's those experts in the school that are gonna be um, uh, the, the key voice in those deep dive conversations. Um, it, the, the framework, as, as, as Nina said earlier, um, it, you know, it isn't as data approached um, in the way that the old framework was, um, uh, and uh, you know the, the 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 new framework's very much set up in a in a different way. So if you are asked questions about deep dives and um, very specific data, um, you know the, the the is potentially distorting the line between the strategic and operational. You need to actually, you know, there's nothing stopping you in it reminding inspectors of your role. Um, and, 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 and being clear on that. That said, um, you know, I, I think um, one thing we were potentially a bit worried about is um, just because Ofsted are not gonna be looking at, at that internal uh, data set uh, in the way um, that, 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 that you will be, um, we need to make sure that uh, as, as governors and trustees, um, we are still using that, that data to help us um, uh, uh, triangulate what we're being told by our leaders um, in, in the meetings we have um, uh, year in, year out. Um, so I think internal data is still really um, important. 
Um, so on that note, Nina, I'm going to hand back over to you. Thanks, Sam. So uh, just for the final few points, um, we thought we would reflect back on the research that we've been doing, as Sam mentioned, um, and it's looking at the good and the not so good and it's making the most of the opportunities that you do have to sort of learn from the, the inspection um, and sort of figure out your next steps. So we're looking at the good, the feedback meetings are said to be treasure troves and um, straight from Ofsted, you know, right, right from the outset of the framework coming into place, they said that the feedback meetings would be the, the time and the opportunity for governing boards and school leaders to understand why inspectors have reached the judgments that they have, how about how their experiences at, was at the school and kind of make those key points um, across to, to senior leaders and, and the governing board. One thing that NJ pushed for at the very start of the education inspection framework coming into, into force was um, uh, the, the feedback meetings being clerked. Um, we strongly recommend and tell all of our, recommend everyone clerks their feedback meetings. Um, when you have that minuted, it's there for you to look back on, it's there for you to use and inform future planning. Um, so wherever possible, please clerk your feedback meetings. Um, as many governors and trustees uh, attend the feedback meeting as possible, that's also really important. There's a lot of information to digest during that inspection process. And um, when you're receiving that feedback, there's a lot there. So for as many people to attend and support as possible um, is, is highly recommended. When we're looking at the reports, you can expect something slightly different. So when you, you get your draft report through or when you read the published report, you can expect that maybe governance might not have such a pertinent place within um, the old reports, you know, always had a, a, a statement on governance within that school. Uh, this varies now um, because inspectors can can choose to or not. They're much shorter and a bit more simplistic for parents to understand what it's like to be part of that school. Something that we found from our research um, recently and in, in the first lot of research that we did for Ofsted was that sometimes the reports don't reflect what was heard in the feedback meetings. So where you've got your minuted feedback meeting um, minutes, um, we would recommend that if, if something's not quite adding up, maybe have a, a further deeper conversation about it um, to see if there's anything that needs to be taken forward. But um, it's not, you know, it's, I think it was something like a fifth um, had said that their, their reports don't reflect what was heard in the feedback meetings. So that's sort of the not so good. And just to close up this webinar, we thought it would be appropriate to share what we heard from respondents as top tips um, for those who've already been through inspection. Um, and I think these are these main pointers should help get you through, I hope. Um, so clarify the key messages that you want to get across to the inspector. Like Sam said, be confident in, in what you know. Um, it's important that you work as a team to share those messages as well. So whether it's worth talking beforehand about what your key messages would be um, might be helpful. Um, if you're not sure what the feed in, within the feedback meeting, if you're not sure what the inspector is telling you or how they've reached a conclusion about a judgment, don't be afraid to ask. Um, this, as we've said, the feedback meeting is so important for you as a governing board and school leaders that actually if you need clarification on something, you ask and um, make sure that's minted as well. Um, collect examples through the year of key decisions and holding to account. Um, this is something that you can easily forget to do um, or sometimes you don't think about. And sometimes there's so many um, occasions where there's good practice of you know, holding your leader to account or making these really big decisions. And they can sometimes blur into the background, especially when you've got the pressure of, a, of an offset inspection um, on top of you. So um, have those evidenced them to hand so that when it comes to the time where you are inspected, you can pull these out and use them within your conversations um, with those inspectors. Again, minute the feedback meeting. I can't reinforce this further um, enough. Uh, know your school's development plan and be prepared to to explain the changes. So, you know, admitting that actually something's being changed or you're making amendments or something, it, it isn't a bad thing. It's recognizing that actually we've acknowledged that this could be improved. This is how we're planning to improve it. And these are the steps we're taking, we've taken so far. 
Make sure that your uh, governing board records and school website are regularly maintained and checked. So although Ofsted might not look at internal data, they will, um, you know, referring back to what Sam said, they may occasionally look at your, your website or they should look at your website and your governing board records. So make sure that they're up, um, up to date and current. And then the final one I think is, is a really good one to end on and really key, um, support your head teacher and ensure that your school staff are supported after the inspection. It's, it's a heavy few days, whether you, know, you intend for it to be or not, um, inspections can be, you know, pressurizing and they can't there is that that culture of fear often associated with them um don't be afraid to take a step back and take a breath and 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 see how everyone else is doing after the inspection and then when the time is right you can look back at the minutes you can look back at what you found and rejoin and regroup um, as a team to discuss the the experience how people feel and and how you want to move forward from the inspection so if anything, you know, the last point is something that I think is really important to take away. Um, you know, it's always it's always good to keep on going, but actually just taking a breath, taking a step back and thinking, actually, this has been a bit of a week. Let's let's take a breath and talk about it and then moving forward. So um, that concludes our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we would love to hear from you if you go through the inspection in the new academic year. Um, please do email us, it, it would be great. And if you've got any questions, please do email us again. We'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, if you want to see any more events that we have at NGA uh, in the upcoming weeks and months, uh, you can visit the events page on our website and uh, sign up there. But thank you and have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.